Hey, what's good gamers? Jackal on here, and of course, welcome back. Happy Saturday to each and every one of you. Uh, Assassin's Creed, Ubisoft, once again in the news, and once again, it's just not good news. I, I mean, at this point, when every single one of these AAA companies launches anything, there's a reason, by the way, why I waited this long to actually cover the video. When I saw the original Meltdown, I obviously did some research. Uh, the problem is that it's very difficult to do research these days because you just don't know which one of the resources are actually coming from the side of truth, which one of the resources are actually diving into the actual story. Uh, you, you just don't know, right? Uh, that, that's the problem. So uh, the original outcry was about one of the main characters that is uh, Yasuko or Yasuke or something to that effect. It's the samurai that, that is in the game. And this is a black character uh, in a an Asian Japanese game, right? And people had a meltdown over this, as you can imagine, right? Uh, everything that I've been able to find suggests that uh, this Yusuko character or Yusuka character was actually a samurai. It's one of the few, if not one of the only, uh, black samurai that ever lived in Japan. Now, there's been a lot of debate back and forth about what exactly he was. Uh, some sources say that he was only a retainer, but then there's other sources that say samurai was often called retainers in Japan. So it, it's very difficult to know. And quite frankly, that's not why I'm not going to play Ubisoft's brand new Assassin's Creed Shadows. It has nothing to do with the main character being black. Although I do think I don't want to get involved in the argument over whether or not this is an actual historical character or if this is just, you know, uh, Ubisoft doing the DEI thing. I think what's more important is we have to talk about what lies behind a decision like this, right? So you sit in a boardroom or in a room and a bunch of developers are talking about their new game that they want to work on. And I'm going to just use very layman terms here so everyone can follow along. And, and everyone's sitting there and going, hey, you know what? We have this series called Assassin's Creed. It is perfect for ninjas. Let's do ninjas. And they go, well, let's not do ninjas, but let's do something ninja adjacent. How about samurai? And it, everyone's like, oh, yes, that would be so cool. We can set it in Japan, you know, during uh, the olden days of Japan and the Japanese empire. It would be so cool to have uh, like actual samurai there. Imagine the armors, imagine the weapons, imagine the world. It's going to be so beautiful. And at what point? Does someone speak up and go, well, actually, setting it in Japan is going to be very undiversified because Japan historically, and even to this day, is an incredibly closed society. Like, I found out not that long ago that if I were to marry a Japanese woman and we had children, our children on their IDs are not Japanese and can never be Japanese. Even if they go on to marry Japanese people, and they have children, and so on and so forth, their bloodline is, according to Japan at least, forever tainted. There are still shops in Japan that only serves locals. Like, they don't serve foreigners. You're not even allowed to go into those shops. So Japan, and I don't want to change that. That's their culture. That's what they want to do. They like that, hey, you know, live your life and prosper, as far as I'm concerned, uh, because... The people are very friendly. I've met quite a few people from Asia. I have to say that's one of the things that sort of stands out to me, generally speaking, about Asian people. They're, and this is Chinese, Korean, and Japanese, and Philippines, and pretty much everywhere else. They're always very friendly, very cordial. There's very much uh, the same kind of thing as in South Africa, where it's, it's very much about respect and showing respect and so on and so forth. So it's, it's pretty cool, right? And I think you can still go there and enjoy this. But <clears throat> obviously, the thing that I would make a point here, and again, I, I don't really care about the fact that there is a... The, the, the problems with this game is way bigger than the main character being black. That I don't even give a shit about, because if the game played well, I couldn't care less what the race of the character that I'm playing is. But we have to look about what was the driving force, right? So what influenced these decisions? Obviously, we want to make a game that is samurai, that is all about Japan and celebrating Japanese culture. At some point, 
someone had to come in and say, well, this is not going to be a very diverse game. It's basically just going to be a bunch of Japanese people. And then someone said, oh, well, actually, there is this one character in the lore that we can use to make the game a lot more diverse. You see, so it's still infected with DEI. It's still infected with that idea. Now, to my mind, and this is a point that I've made before, if you're going to make, if you want to make a story about black characters, right, and you want black characters in your story, why not go to Africa? If you think that you can't make games on African stories, you are so wrong. Like, dude, there are cultures in Africa that are off the charts. Like, the level of stories that you could tell to celebrate African culture is insane. Like, seriously insane. They have some of the coolest, coolest historical uh, sort of tales that they've, that they've uh, handed down generation to generation. And almost every black African tribe have these very unique stories about their ancestors and about the spirits and what the ancestors do and how their cultures are set up around their ancestors and the spirits. So you could make some ridiculously cool stories. Plus, Africa would be beautiful, right? But of course, no one actually wants to do the, the work of diving into that and actually putting effort into learning about African culture. It's much easier to just take what you know at the moment and then just shoehorn that into whatever world you want to, you know, whatever world you want to exploit next. Because most of these AAA companies are just exploiters at this point, right? Uh, they know that Japanese culture is currently huge. They know that a lot of people love Asian stories and history and so on and so forth, but they also want to get that good DEI money, you know, and this is just perfect for it. Take one super obscure character from history that by all accounts was an actual samurai, but of course, when you think from the position of the consumer, and this is always, this is what business is, right? When you think from the position of the consumer, when consumers hear that we're going to do Assassin's Creed Japan, that was not the character most likely that they had in, in their minds. That was not the character that they envisioned as being the front and center character of this game. And you decided to do that because, well, DEI. But actually, the things that's worse about this game isn't that, boys. It's not that. You're, you're all missing the forest for the trees here, in my opinion. So firstly, why will I not buy Assassin's Creed Shadows? Well, it's simple. It's gonna be shit. It's Ubisoft. I mean, let's be very honest. Let's be very real here, boys. It's going to be Far Cry. It's going to be every other Assassin's Creed game. It's going to be a very large open world game. Most of the open world will be filled with absolute nonsense, repeatable quests just in different locations. It's probably going to follow the exact same model as you've seen Ubisoft perfect over the last th uh, few years. And when I say perfect, I don't mean perfect because players love it. I mean perfect because it allows them to just sausage factory this shit, right? Every single two years or every year even sometimes, there's a new Assassin's Creed and it's all just the same formula over and over and over again. You're going to have this giant open world. There's going to be a bunch of elite mobs that you can fight. Some may even chase you if that's something that they want to go and revisit. And you're just basically going to repeat quest all over the place, right? So that's what I expect this game to be, I don't expect them to go back to the original Assassin's Creed, and the reason I don't is because of their bonkers requirements. So first and foremost, uh, this game will not be launching on the old generation of consoles, right? It, it, it will only launch on the newest Xboxes and the newest Playstations and on PC, obviously. PC Master Race, why wouldn't you? So anyone that doesn't own one of the newest consoles will never be able to play it. And also, if you don't have an active internet connection, you can never play this game. It requires online verification before you can log into the game. Why does that? Why is that required in a game that, from what we can tell at least, is full-blown single-player? Well, because uh, Ubisoft, like all other companies like to double dip. They, they want your information. They want to make sure that they have everything they need to know who you are, right? And so that they can sell that data. But then we get to actually the most egregious part of all of this. 
This is the pricing guide for this game. Standard edition, $70. Gold edition, $109. Like, what the hell happened? I just want to know, right? Because, okay, so here's the thing. It used to be that the other editions would be in $10 increments. We would pay $60 for the standard edition, $70 for the gold edition, and then $90 for the ultimate edition. And then usually there would be some kind of collector's edition that would be bonkers expensive, but you also get a shit ton of stuff with it. The pricing jump is insane. It's $70 for the standard edition. And by the way, if you saw how it compares to everything else, I think I have a picture of it here somewhere. Here we go, right? So this is how it compares to everything else. Let me just, um, sorry, let me just open this image in another tab. So you guys can see, right? So the base game, literally standard edition, just gives you the base game. The gold edition gives you the base game three days early access. And by the way, don't be fooled by this. It's not three days early access for people that purchase the more expensive versions. What this means is that if you only pay $70, only pay $70, what you're paying for is three days late access to the game. The game launches three days early officially but you have to wait three days later early access this is just bonkers bullshit it doesn't exist right so that's what the goal and then of course the season pass which would include the two upcoming expansions if you bought gold edition and the ultimate edition standard edition none of that right and then you get the ultimate edition which is 130 dollars 130 it's basically double double the uh, the original game, right? <laughs> you get the base game, three days early access, a season pass, and then an ultimate pack, which is the Securia, uh, whatever the f however you pronounce that, character pack, the you know, hideout pack, five skill points, which is bonkers. Like, why are you giving people power increases in a single player game? And then the Raid Track and Photo Filter. It, it is disgusting. It, it's absolutely disgusting, absolutely unacceptable. And what's sad is players are going to support this. There are mindless drones on the internet that will absolutely fall for this hook, line, and sinker, won't be able to help themselves, will just go balls deep and buy this. Because that's what we deserve. If you want to know why these companies are charging this amount of money for it, it's because they can. It's because someone out there buys it. And they don't even need that many people to buy it. If it ends up that 5 million people buy this game, but a million people bought the Ultimate Edition, that's almost double. It's like two people bought one game. It is, it's just disgusting. It is just disgusting. And you should also then remember that if the two, if, <laughs> if two expansions are included in the Gold and the Ultimate Edition, then it is... It is safe to assume that these expansions are already finished and it's basically just stuff that they've removed from the base game and they're going to sell that as expansions to players who buy the base game. Now, what, what fills me with joy is I imagine, this is just a prediction, I could be wrong, but this game's going to launch and it's going to launch to overwhelmingly negative or even just mostly negative comments and it's not going to be because people are racist but just because the game is going to have a lot of bugs it's going to be very broken, it's not going to be that fun, it's going to be monotonous, and it's going to be basically whatever we've come to expect from Assassin's Creed games, and why Assassin's Creed as a, a franchise is busy dying. And that means that this is just another dud on Ubisoft's uh, broad list of duds that they've launched. Ubisoft is going bankrupt, they are, I can't wait for everyone at Ubisoft to be fired and Ubisoft to be closed as a studio. I can't wait for that. This is a, this, as a studio, Ubisoft is the most disgusting studio in the gaming industry, period, ever, period. The, I hate Ubisoft with everything in me. I will never buy a single one of their games. I will pirate this shit before I buy it. And I, I don't, I like Assassin's Creed, modern day Assassin's Creed, so little that I won't even pirate their games. I won't even pirate it. 
that's how little I give a shit about this this uh, this in this franchise. So yeah, the reason I waited this long is because I was doing research. I was trying to find any information I could about why people are losing their minds over this character. And then the pricing guides uh, came out, and I was like, dude, this is just, this is the disgusting bot. This is the bot that everyone should be talking about, not the the other bullshit. The other bullshit barely even matters. Look, the game's going to suck, and that's it. Anyway, so ladies and gentlemen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back my coffee. Like the video if you liked, dislike if you didn't. You remember, you can keep the channel free from sponsorships $1 a month over on Patreon, or alternatively, and even better, join me on Twitch, or else I'll kick you in the balls.